Hi everyone, welcome to your next criminology video. This is for your campaign section. This is the final part of unit one for your controlled assessment. So this video will cover 3.1, 3.2 and 3.3. So your plan, your make and your justify your own campaign for change. So let's get started. All right, so let's just remind ourselves of what it is that we are doing so 3.1 is a planning a campaign for change this is a maximum of 10 marks you get approximately 45 minutes to complete this in your controlled assessment section two is the designing the making of the materials you get approximately 20 marks for this and an hour and a half to complete and then finally you get you have to justify your campaign justify why you chose that campaign why you chose that logo that name that color scheme etc that is worth 15 marks and you have approximately me an hour to complete this so what you will notice from this is that this section is not only worth a considerable amount of your max you also get a considerable amount of your time to do it so planning a campaign for change 3.1 this unit requires you to plan a campaign for change related to a crime. The plan must be detailed, including clearly described actions in, in a relevant time sequence. In the controlled assessment, the campaign you choose must be one of the crimes described in the brief. So the brief is that short story that you will receive in your exam. So on the day of your exam, you'll receive the brief. The brief will talk about a number of different crimes. And so you have to pick one of those crimes. The crimes are what you learned in Unit 1, 1 1.1. So things like genocide or... Um, white collar crime so it'll it'll be a selection of those and you have to pick one to do your campaign on what should the plan look like it must have aims and objectives you must justify your choice of campaign so why have you picked white collar for example it should be a clear target audience you need to consider and be able to justify the methods used you must be able to uh, consider and able to justify the materials the finances and finally the time skill and then anything else that you might possibly require so the first part the first section I, i've broken this into the different kind of three sections paragraph one so i've done it as far as paragraphs in your in your controlled assessment you need to write paragraphs for each of these sections so your first paragraph is where you start so what's your focus um so decide how you will justify your choice so uh, what is the focus for your campaign for change is it because the crime is underreported uh, do you think the law needs changing so this is where you say probably whether it's the changing awareness or changing attitudes paragraph two is your aims what are the aims of your campaign your aims have to be long-term goals and it can't just be bring about change of awareness we need far more specifics we need a lot more you're looking at at least four different aims for your campaign you have to imagine that you're actually going to do this campaign that's the only way to get your head around it you have to actually think right i am campaigning for this where do i start what would i do so you have to actually think about this in reality otherwise you will never connect with the campaign and never connect with them top marks um, encourage people to report the crime raise awareness educate the public change the law any other aims and then your objectives your objectives are different from your aims they are short-term aims so objectives are how do you get your long-term aims so think of your objectives like your to-do list what do you need to do for each stage so in order to get your aims you probably need maybe two or three objectives for each of your aims how are you actually going to raise awareness what are you actually going to do so you need to be specific so be specific with your objectives they should help you reach your aims they need to be smart so they need to be specific measurable achievable realistic and look within the time so um, there needs to be a clear link between your aims so what your campaign aims to achieve and your objectives how you intend to do and achieve those aims but your objectives shouldn't just repeat your aims they should be clear specific steps like a to-do list
Paragraph four, five and six, you need to justify your choice of campaign. So you need to explain why you've chosen the crime, not just because it's the one on the brief. Um, it could include personal reasons as well as objective reasoning. So, for example, your own connection to the crime, statistics, real life examples under reporting, lack of public awareness. Again, you need to do some research. You need to look into why your specific area that you're looking into is underreported. Back it up. What are the statistics, etc., etc. If there are no statistics, so look on the CSEW, for example, or the, um, the the crime statistics. If there are no statistics, then that's a reason why you're also doing it. Because if there are no statistics, but it's happening, we need you need to raise awareness or attitudes for people to either report them or record them, etc. Identify and justify your target audience. Who are you aiming it at? Do not say everybody. That's my advice any, anyway, because if you say everybody, then it makes your life an awful lot harder. Be specific with your target audience because everything will change depending on your target audience from the language that you use. Are you being colloquial and slang? Are you being formal with proper grammar and punctuation? Think of your colour scheme. Think of even your event. If you do a coffee morning, chances are teenagers aren't going to go to it because they'll be at school. So your target audience is immensely important in order to be able to do the rest of your campaign properly. Who is your campaign aimed at? Who are the target audience? Why have you selected that group? Are they most affected by crime? Are they the group who knows the least about it, for instance? It might make sense to direct a campaign against knife crime at young people as they're the most liked by the victims and perpetrators. How will your campaign methods and materials appeal to this group? Methods and materials, then in paragraph six, you need to plan and think about the methods that you're going to use. So make a list of all the different things that you could do. So we focused on creating a poster because we justified how a poster is actually better than a leaflet because it's cheaper to print. But also, you know, you can get the information a lot quicker over there. We looked at the different social medias that we're going to use because, again, they're free to set up and publish and um, how a hashtag is easy to use. We looked at how um, it, we might do like T-shirts or hoodies and things like that so which one would be more popular within your target audience so these are your materials why have you chosen those methods um try to link the, me the methods to your aims and target audience so try and keep all of this linked together as well what materials will you actually need to make these things Finance, time scales, and then other resources. So the last section, the seven, the eight, and the nine of your paragraphs. Your finances. Where are you going to get the materials from? Where are you going to get the paper and the print in order to be able to make your posters? So have a look at actual companies find an actual company that could make your poster see how much it would cost for them to make that poster in color then you have a specific amount of money that you need to raise to print off them posters in color and um, again sometimes if you print so many you get a discount so it's cheaper to get more than it is to get less um, etc so look at that look at your event is that going to cost you money look at um hoodies versus t-shirts which website are you going to use how much is it going to cost how much do you need to raise initially um what are going to be the overall costs or how many hoodies are you thinking about doing within the first few months how much is that going to cost are you going to do a second print of posters etc um, what's the potential profit what's the allocation for profits how to raise the initial funds so how are you originally going to raise your funds are you going to do a donation page on your social media if so you have to add it to your social media and um, are you going to do um, an event if so is everything linked to that event is everything is your social media linked to it is your poster linked to it etc um, etc et um, what are the potential profits so if you make so many hoodies you sell so many hoodies how much is your profit margin so that one's quite tricky but look at actual websites work it out logically think about if I make these how many do I have to sell how much profit will I get etc with your time scales this is paragraph eight you need to consider what your basically your each of your steps so what are you going to start with when well, you're starting with coming up with your aims and objectives you then um, need to think about designing your poster so your post will take so long and then you're going to print them and you're going to distribute them who's going to distribute them how many posts are you going to distribute where are you going to distribute them um, and so how long will that take and then how long from your 
post has been distributed and setting up your um, social media, how long are you going to leave those to get a bit of momentum before you do the event? Uh, because obviously you, you, can, you need to advertise to get your event. So how long are you going to leave between those bits? After your event, how long are you going to leave it until you do something else? So think about how the finances are spread out because obviously chances are, you know, if you set up a donations page on your um, Facebook, then that might be able to pay for some hoodies to then sell at the event to get some profit. Again, things like that. Is that what you're going to do? How are you going to do it? Um, so research time, how long will that take? Designing your materials, creation of your materials, and then implementation. Finally, is there anything else you need? Do you need volunteers? Do you need to train them? Things like that. So that's your first section. That's your first nine paragraphs for your plan. Then we move into the actual design of your materials. So to get into the top band, band four, you need a well-designed and attractive materials. The content is appropriate for changing behaviour. They have to be visually and verbally stimulating and technically accurate. So they both have to be visually for sight, but also verbally what's written accurate. And you have to be able to change people's perceptions. So is your poster, is your Facebook, is your hoodie going to make people stop and go, I want to know more about that? So, the outline for this unit, you need to design the materials, you need to produce well-designed and attractive materials, the content must be appropriate to change behaviour, they must be visually stimulating and contain accurate information. Um, and when it comes to the control assessment, you need to design three materials. They say three materials, so I wouldn't do any more than three materials. Um, so, it, it, what we've gone down the route of is a social media, so you can do Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Um, you can do a bit one piece of merchandise, so you could do a mug, a pen, a hoodie, a t-shirt. Um, and also um, a poster. So you do a poster or a leaflet or a, a blog or something, but a poster is probably the easiest one to do. Uh, and as you said, you can justify it based on the cost, etc. We're also going to throw a hashtag in there just because hashtags are very straightforward to do and often some of you might even have your logo as a hashtag. Um, you might also want to do a wristband if you want to do an extra one because again that's quite straightforward to do. But don't forget on a poster, don't advertise a Twitter unless you're going to create a Twitter page. Don't advertise an Instagram unless you're going to design an Instagram. You actually have to design everything you're advertising otherwise it's not um, succinct between your different items. To, to, or consistent, yeah, to keep consistency through the logos, etc. Things to consider then, the structure and layout of information, get the audience's attention without confusing them, without giving them too much information. Your layout and structure should also follow uh, normal conventions. Of, so research all the posters, how much information do they present, what's typical, use images to get attention, persuasive language, emotions direct, you should, you will. Play on people's emotions, get their attention. Um, promotion of action, you want them to do something, tell them what you want them to do. Consider Consideration of your target, uh, target audience, again, think about the language that you're using and the alignment with the campaign. All the materials should have something in common. They should be consistent. Um, this was something that we picked up when we were practicing our different uh, campaign options and different ideas was there wasn't there was a lack of consistency. I'm talking about consistency in font, in size, in colour, in everything should be exactly the same. Sometimes we were using capitals on one thing and then lowercase on another. You have to be consistent, just like copying and pasting. They should be consistent throughout. You will lose marks if they're not consistent throughout your different things that you are designing and making. Um, when it comes to um, overall, uh, would you stop and look at your poster, for example? So if we if we stuck up all the posters, so for example, I have 50 students in, in the criminology in the two groups. If I stuck up all 50 posters, would yours stand out? Would you stop and read yours? Would yours emote a change in behaviour? If your answer is no, you need to do better. You have to encourage people to change their behavior if you wouldn't change your behavior from your poster then why should somebody else so you need to grab people's attention from the uh from what you're advertising from what you're campaigning for so let's get started then so 
social media with a Facebook and the hashtag, the recommended one that we're going to use is the, is the classtools.net. So um, the best way of doing this is to set up a Facebook page and then do screenshots and put them into the Word document. So that's how we're going to do it. That's how we've practiced doing it. Um, you could do a Twitter and Instagram page using that website if you would like to. You can use different websites if you, if you want, but these are the ones that we've practiced and that we like. But you can use different ones as long as the end product is you have a Facebook page. And obviously it's a fake book page because it's not a real campaign with a real Facebook uh, page um, you could also do um, a logo and a brand maybe this might be even your hashtag a web banner is what goes along the top and um, this is similar to a post so again you could have the same color schemes etc so these are just some examples from previous years Old blood is red and fraud fraud awareness. So this is the idea of the black and the red with the white. Um, uh, again, very, very eye-catching, very simple, but very straightforward. Um, with this one, uh, again, on this person's um, Facebook, they, they did video links. They also put their hoodies on there to advertise what their hoodies look like. They put information, they put facts of the day. So again, imagine this is a real Facebook site. What would you like to see on there? You need to put your event on there. You need to put your links to your other things. You could put your poster on there. You could put your hoodie on there. So you need to make it like a, a live, like a live Facebook. So you need to make it look as real as possible. Merchandise, so your hoodies, you could do something else if you wanted to, again, justify why you pick what you pick, but you only need to do one. Um, so, for example, we're going to use teamshirts.co.uk. You can use another site if you prefer, but this is the one that we've been practicing with. Don't forget as well, it is easier to um, copy and paste or take a screenshot of the hoodie or the plain hoodie on the website and download it into a Word document and then alter it in a Word document just because it's hard to do on the actual website because you've got to use the website construction. So it is easier to screenshot the plain hoodie that they have, put it in a Word document and then add your things to it. Uh, but again, you can do it however you wish if you find an easier way of doing it. Don't forget on your hoodie, you need to do front and back. You could do arms as well if you want to, but make sure it's obvious. Make sure it's it's going to catch people's attention. Don't forget as well, if your hoodie is to be worn by girls, girls have long hair, are they going to cover important things on the back? Um, have you got links to your social media? Have you got a phone number? Have you got pictures? Have you got your logo, your name? Have you got things that are going to catch people's attention? Are they going to go, oh, that's that campaign? Like Help for Heroes, you know pretty quickly, oh, that's a Help for Heroes hoodie because of, because of the similarity is between their campaign items and um, again think about the color what color are you going to do your hoodie why that color will your target audience wear that color um, and go on the actual website go on the website and type in how many you want get actual accurate numbers and finances for them and um, so again that will talk through some of the actual finances that you could do um, there's a wristband link as well there, so wristbands.co.uk, so you could create your own wristband. Very, very straightforward because it's basically just a strip and you put your, your name or your hashtag and, and that's it. So again, screenshot it, add it into your Word document, just like that. Fundraiser. Now, this is something that I'd like you to really think about quite carefully. How much are you going to charge people to go into your fundraiser? Now, if you do charge, for example, £15, what are people getting for their money? So somebody isn't going to pay £15 for nothing. So what are they going to get for their money? And if you're going to give them something like a raffle, coffees, cake, something like that, how are you going to pay for that material? So... You've got to think about all of these things. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to charge people £15 to do a walk. Why on earth would somebody want to pay £15 to then do a walk? Um, so maybe think about, you know, keeping your, your costs down so that more people want to join. So £2 and people might want to join in. Also think about what your event actually is. You can't do things where you have to hire rooms or something like that because again that costs money money that you do not have so you need to think very carefully about what you're going to do 
and try to be a bit different. That's why the Ice Bucket Challenge worked so well, because it was different. It's not just a sponsored walk. It's not just a coffee morning. Try and think, I mean, there's nothing wrong with those things. And that's why they're popular because, and that's why people like doing the Macmillan morning and things, because they're popular. People like baking cakes and contributing and raising money and awareness. But if you're actually going to do a campaign, which is what you've got to imagine, doing something that another charity already does uh, is that just not just overkill so if Macmillan's already doing the coffee morning why would someone then want to do your coffee morning as well so think about something that people would actually want to do what would you do would you join your event if the answer is no again you probably maybe did the ice bucket challenge why wouldn't you do your events you've got to really think about it um, and again it talks through the different things that you could do there with the different profit margins of the participants. Campaign posters, how many are you going to print? What's, how much would it cost you to print them? Who is going to distribute them? Where are you going to distribute them? Where are you going to put them? And um, You could also, don't forget, use on your poster on your Facebook to advertise your fundraiser, so make sure that your advertisement is there. But how are you going to get them? Where would your audience see them most? Um, how are you going to put them around town etc so final section then the justify you've planned it you've made it now you need to justify why so you need to justify your campaign justify means you explain with good reasons what you have done and why you need to provide clear and detailed justification what is well reasoned this justification is to relate to the whole campaign so everything the audience the materials the objectives etc so things these are just things that you need to consider you need to explain why your campaign is necessary why is it necessary why are you actually doing this at all what impact do you hope to achieve and what are the reasons for your campaign focus so why specifically white collar why specifically fraud credit card fraud or whatever it might be consider the following what evidence is there that is unreported why will your campaign make a difference um, and what support and statistics and real life examples do you have why did you adopt certain methods? Why certain materials? Um, how did the materials and methods used relate to your target audience and overall aim? So you have to justify everything. The more you can explain why, the better. So imagine you're trying to help somebody else do a campaign. So you're justifying why you did a poster rather than this, why you did this rather than this, why this worked and this didn't work. So you need to justify everything. Why did you choose your campaign name, your logo, your hashtags, your slogan, if you've got one, your colour scheme? Why those colours? Why that logo? Why that name? Think again, again about your target audience. Why did those things work for your target audience? Why did they work for your aims? Um, consistency throughout your campaign, raising awareness and attracting attention, getting noticed, emotive language. So think about how you've used all these things within your campaign. You need to use a range of methods, so posters, social media, merchandise, fundraising, events and awareness. So again, what are the strengths of each of these? Why did these things work compared to other things? Why have they worked for other campaigns that you then want to emulate? Uh, will they attract your target audience, so posters instead of leaflets? Why would a poster attract your target audience rather than a leaflet? Um, are they in keeping with your aims? What's the cost factor? Um, and again, use evidence to support your arguments. Use statistics relate to social media, age, demographics. Again, do some research like you would if you were actually doing the campaign. Justify your choice of images, persuasive text, your layouts and fonts. Why that font? Think about on the beginning of 2.1, where I say about the um, knife crime one, the, the, the font is like a knife. Think about the, um, the campaign about stop bullying. It's like a child's writing. So think about the font that you've picked. Is it just the standard word font? Have you actually changed it specific to your campaign? Think about your persuasive text and persuasive language. So how how is it appealing to your target audience? You're grabbing their attention. Are you being clear about the crime you're trying to draw awareness to? Convincing people, getting an emotional response, shock tactics. Are you trying to shock them to get their attention? And um, being clear about what you want people to do. So what do you want? What action do you want people to take? 
You finally you need to justify your fi your finances and your time scales. So why would your, your it be financially viable? Why would it actually work? How how because again, if you need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds to begin it. It's very, very hard. Where are you going to get that money from? You can't just say, oh, I'll use my own savings. What savings? Why? Can you do it free and cut the costs down in lots of areas until it's started and established and then start to get a little bit of money in? Um, and again, are your timescales realistic as far as how you would um, carry out this campaign? How long you've left for each of the momentums to build up? Ha have you left long enough for people to donate and give money and be aware of your event, etc., etc.? All right, so hopefully you found that useful. This is a really, really tricky assessment. This is not easy because it's so unbelievably creative. You have to be creative. We're not expecting you to be media gurus. We're not expecting you to be Word document, you know, pros. You just need to be creative and you need to be consistent. So it's about consistency across your different campaigns. But it's grabbing your attention. Show it to uh, a friend or a family member show you know obviously socially distanced but you know maybe put it on your facebook would people be drawn to it get some feedback see how people respond to um you know any ideas that you've got how would your campaign actually work in reality so think about as many different formats and ideas for the different crimes that you can how would you get attention there how would you catch people's attention etc um and why should people respond to your campaign hopefully you found this useful um i'll be doing another video about the breakdowns of times and marks once i go and collect all my sheets from college and um, otherwise this should keep you going certainly for now so thanks very much for watching everybody if you've got any questions or problems don't forget to either email me or uh, write a comment underneath otherwise thanks very much for now guys bye bye bye